If you're like many people, you've probably wondered why different parts of your body are, well, different. Why is a neuron different than a blood cell? The answer lies in gene expression and regulation. What genes are expressed and at what times make all the difference in how our cells appear and function. One of life's most powerful methods of controlling gene expression lies in histone modifications. DNA's double helix form is generally familiar to any students who have taken a biology class, but less familiar is the way it is packaged. To put it in perspective, the DNA in each cell of your body is 6 feet long, and all of your cellular DNA would reach to the moon and back 150,000 times. This is quite obviously a problem. In order to condense all the DNA into that nucleus, DNA wraps around proteins called histones, which make up nucleosomes. Nucleosomes are positively charged proteins made of eight histones, also known as an octamer. The DNA wraps along the edges of the octamer disc, rendering around 147 base pairs of DNA inaccessible to transcriptional proteins. There are two copies each of histones H2A, H2B, H3, and H4, and they each have different locations for chemical modifications that can cause direct changes or recruit other proteins that cause change. These nucleosomes wrap the DNA into a structure called a 10 nanometer fiber. However, the DNA coils up even further into a 30 nanometer fiber, in even more condensed forms after that. Genes in the center of these structures are nearly impossible to express. Thankfully for us, histone modifications can open up these difficult regions. Regulators of nucleosome function are crucial in allowing some DNA to be accessible, and even better, the modifications are easily removed and replaced. Think of DNA as a brick wall, which can only be altered slowly, and as histone modifications as the graffiti on it, easily changing what is expressed by the wall. See those tails coming off the nucleosome? Those are chock full of positively charged residues that act as little tethers that loop through the DNA and bind it more tightly to the nucleosome. They are often the site of modifications because of their positive charges. Many types of chemical modifications exist. Phosphorylation, biotinylation, and ubiquitination are a few. Ubiquitin, a small protein, is pictured here in yellow attached to the green lysine. Ubiquitin is much, much larger than the residue it modifies, but this is a unique case. However, by far, the most common modifications are acetylation, the addition of an acetyl group pictured here, and methylation, the addition of a methyl group, also shown. Quite generally, acetylation makes DNA inside a nucleosome more accessible. When an acetyl group is added to a lysine, it neutralizes the positive charge, and since DNA is negative, it loosens the interaction between the DNA and histone. Enzymes that add an acetyl group are called histone acetyl transferases, and the enzymes that remove them are histone deacetylases. The enzymes that add and remove acetyl groups can only function in one specific site within a specific histone. That is, an H3K9 acetyltransferase is only able to add acetyl groups to the ninth lysine on histone 3. Methylation is a little more tough to predict. The addition of a methyl group, like acetyl groups, is catalyzed by histone methyltransferases and histone demethylases, and each site has a unique enzyme. However, there is no general rule to methylation because the same modification may have different consequences in different parts of the genome based on what proteins are recruited. Further, a site can be monomethylated, dimethylated, and trimethylated. Even more than that, methylations and other modifications can be present concurrently in a single histone site. Yikes! Scientists have proposed the histone code hypothesis to explain this complexity which very simply states that combinations of modifications on a nucleosome lead to specific consequences. Some modifications have been associated with open chromatin states, and others with closed. However, it is likely that the histone code, if it exists, is, is not a clear alphabet like DNA transcription, where a codon always codes for a specific amino acid. It's more like body language, where, say, a frown can mean discomfort, sadness, or disappointment in different situations. Furthermore, the histone code operates far below its possible complexity. For example, in one location site in the Drosophila genome, the 18 most common modifications were assessed. Almost a quarter of a million possible combinations were possible, yet only around 9 were read. All protein structures were sourced off the protein database in accordance with its copyright rules. Thank you for joining us and learning more about histone modifications.